In this episode, training for Crew Dragon continues, SpaceX Crew 1 becomes a four-person crew, and in Boca Chica, SN3 buckles under pressure. Starship Update So a bit of disappointing news, so very early on Friday morning, SN3 was destroyed during cryogenic pressure testing. So just to recap a bit, SN3 was transported to the launch pad last weekend on Sunday, March 29th, and placed on the launch stand just a day later. SpaceX commenced ambient pressure testing just a few days later in the early morning hours of April 2nd. From the livestream, ambient pressure tests looked to have gone well, and Elon later confirmed this on Twitter. With the successful completion of ambient pressure tests, the team in Boca Chica progressed towards first attempts of cryogenic testing early on Thursday evening. At around 5 p.m. Boca Chica time, Frost was spotted on SN3, indicating that SpaceX had begun filling the liquid oxygen tank with neutral liquid nitrogen. A few hours later, testing was aborted due to some issues with leaking of ground system equipment valves. SpaceX fortunately was able to sort out the issue relatively quickly, and testing recommenced at around 11 p.m. local time. Everything looked to be going okay with testing until about shortly after 2 a.m. local time, when suddenly, in a very disheartening moment for SpaceX fans, the structure appeared to buckle and then collapse. A couple hours after SN3 was destroyed, Elon took to Twitter to note that the issue could have been caused by a test configuration mistake. Just from some observations from the livestream, it looked like there could have been some issues with pressurization of the liquid oxygen tank. Perhaps the structure buckled due to the increased load exerted on it by the pressurized liquid methane tank. The pattern form on the tank looks like a Yushimura buckling pattern, a triangular mesh buckling pattern found in thin wall cylinders under axial compression. This is just a possible cause proposed by some SpaceX fans. We'll have to wait a few more hours for confirmation from Elon as to what actually happened, after the team in Boca Chica reviews the data. If the issue is just a test configuration issue though, that will be a good sign, as SpaceX won't have to make major modifications to the Starship design. They'll just have to improve test configurations, something that can be easily done. Moving on to SN4. Luckily, SpaceX is developing Starships in parallel. So work on SN4 has already begun. If the turnaround time between the destruction of SN1 and the completion of SN3 is any indicator, then SN4 could be ready for testing in as little as a month, perhaps even earlier. We already could expect some variations in the SN4 design in the form of the landing legs. Earlier this week, Elon unveiled that the landing legs on SN4 and onwards should be longer than those on SN3. While we await the completion of SN4 though, SpaceX fans can use the Starship user guide to conceptualize some potential Starship missions. SpaceX released the guide this week. It's only 5 pages long for now, but gives a good hint to potential customers what's possible with a vehicle with the capabilities of Starship. The share payload capability alone, an 8 meter dynamic payload envelope with extended payload volume for payloads measuring in excess of 22 meters, has the potential to support the likes of missions not seen since the space shuttle era or even ever before. SpaceX gives some potential mission ideas in the document, like the launch of 1-3 to three geosynchronous telecom satellites, 1-2 to two geosynchronous telecom satellites plus rideshare systems and small satellites, satellite capture, repair and return to orbit, and the launch of a full constellation of satellites on a single mission. Back in October of 2019, Vice President and COO of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, mentioned that Starship could launch as many as 400 Starlink satellites at a time. And those are just a few suggestions. The potential list, of course, can go on and on. A look inside. The document also gives some new insight into the interiors of the crew configuration of Starship. It mentions the presence of private cabins, larger common areas, centralized storage, solar storm shelters, and a viewing gallery. With about 1,000 meters cubed of volume available, SpaceX has a lot of room to come up with some interesting interior design concepts. Given the impressive amount of attention the company devotes to detail, we should expect to see some pretty awesome concepts when the interior designs are unveiled. Speaking of sleek interior designs, Crew Dragon update. On Tuesday, March 31st, NASA and JAXA independently announced that the agency's respective astronauts Shannon Walker and Soichi Noguchi will join astronauts Victor Glover Jr. and Michael Hopkins as part of SpaceX Crew-1, the first operational mission for SpaceX's Crew Dragon. According to a statement made on NASA's website, the mission is expected to be the first in a series of rotational missions pending the successful completion of Demo-2 and certification of SpaceX's Crew Dragon. The mission will be the first for Glover, the second for Hopkins and Walker, who previously served as crew members on Expedition 37 and 38 and 24 and 25 respectively, and the third for Japanese astronaut 
Soichi Noguchi. While a definite date has not yet been determined, the launch is expected to take place from LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida later this year. Demo 2 Progress While Shannon, Glover, Hopkins, and Noguchi prepare for SpaceX Crew-1, training is still in high gear for the Demo 2 crew. On Tuesday of this week, NASA unveiled that earlier last month, on Thursday, March 19th and Friday, March 20th, Benkin and Hurley underwent full Demo-2 mission simulation from launch to docking in SpaceX's flight simulator. The astronauts were supported by SpaceX teams in Firing Room 4 at Kennedy Space Center in Florida and the company's mission control in Hawthorne, along with NASA flight controllers and mission control in Houston. The Return of the Worm in other Demo 2 related updates, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine also unveiled some exciting and nostalgia inducing news earlier this week in the form of the return of one of NASA's most recognized symbols, the worm. According to a blog post by NASA, the Falcon 9 vehicle supporting Demo 2 will support the iconic insignia as a way to capture the excitement of a new modern era of human spaceflight. The simple yet sleek and captivating design was introduced in 1975 as an alternative to NASA's meatball, as at the time it was an easier design to reproduce and print and presented less of a complicated metaphor than the meatball. The logo, which NASA states was created by the firm Dan and Blackburn, was honored in 1984 by President Reagan for its simplistic yet innovative design. It was retired in 1992 with the exception of being placed on clothing and other souvenir items. Demo 2 will mark the first time since the last space shuttle launch that the U.S. returns astronauts from U.S. soil on U.S. manufactured rockets. It will be the first time since the launch of STS-1 in 1981 that astronauts are launched from U.S. soil on a new spacecraft. So returning the worm at this time does seem like a pretty fitting gesture. While the world continues to push through on certain times, SpaceX continues to demonstrate resilience. As Starship development continues, failure early in testing brings the opportunity to develop a better overall Starship. The company will leverage on all the lessons learned so far in creating a better SN4. Over the next month, we should expect what's now a very familiar process in terms of SN4 construction. If SpaceX continues with the pace it's demonstrated in the past, then we could expect to see the arrival of SN4 at the launch pad in just as little as a month, possibly even sooner.